Recently, we've been doing a lot of videos on the entry-level graphics cards from AMD, including the RX 6400, the RX 6500 XT, this one, and the RX 6600. And obviously, from all of that testing, we find that the 6600 is probably the best purchase that you can make. But before we actually put all those graphics cards away for another day, we wanted to do one more on the RX 6500 XT. Now this card was released a while ago now, and it didn't get a very good reception when it was released. It is a very underwhelming card, and it's not exactly cheap either. In fact, when we did a comparison between the three different entry-level graphics cards, we kind of found that it didn't really have a place anywhere. But we wanted to give it one more chance, and to do that, we're going to actually put the most underwhelming graphics card so far, against one of the most demanding games released recently. Okay, so let's take a look at what was actually wrong with the Radeon RX 6500 XT. This card was released about a year ago, and AMD put a bit of a price on it of around £180 MSRP. And to be honest, that totally wasn't worth it because even in their own benchmarks, they compared it to a really old graphics card, the RX 570. Now we should have known from those charts in the beginning that there was something wrong with this card because why would you do that instead of comparing it with what should have been compared with and that's the 5000 series. And of course, as soon as everybody got hold of one, we started to realize what the problem was. Now AMD made a few mistakes with this card and I say mistakes, it was more like cutbacks, which really actually hit the performance of the card. They obviously made it a PCI Gen 4 card, but they only made it by a four times slot, which means it's quite limited on how much bandwidth it can get. They only provided it with four gigabytes of memory, even though AMD were the ones that said eight gigabytes was the minimum now. And of course, they also removed a lot of the encoding, so you don't get those fancy record and stream tools, and they don't really make that good for anything kind of really like streaming or recording but you can actually game on them. We've proved that in the past. But of course, we're gonna see how well it actually performs against one of the most demanding games at the moment. And obviously that game is Cyberpunk 2077. Now we have tested this card in the past with that game, but it's been a while and there's been a few driver updates for this card come out. There's been a few game updates for the game that's actually fixed a lot of the issues. So I think this card's actually gonna have the best chance. And to do this test, we're obviously gonna be using our latest benching rig, which has got a PCI Gen 4. So this card shouldn't be held behind at all. But anyway, let's head over to our Benjamin rig, get the card installed and see how well the game plays. So we're now over in the testing area and we've got our card loaded up into this. For those of you that don't remember the card that we've got, it is the Sapphire Pulse RX 6500 XT. It's one of the most basic models out there. We managed to pick the thing up for about £90 a couple of months after it was released. It's all loaded up, we've got the system running and we are into game. Now in the menu, obviously we're getting a 60 frames per second and unfortunately for some reason on this test rig, we can't seem to get that unlocked anyway on any AMD card. If we use an Nvidia card or even the Intel Arc, we can actually break past the 60 frames per second and it doesn't seem to matter what we actually load on here. Cyberpunk just won't go across. We've disabled V-Sync, we've disabled all the settings, not quite sure what's going on, but I don't think that this card has got anything to worry about in trying to get over 60 frames per second, but we'll get into a game and we'll see anyway. Before we actually jump into the game, we'll check the settings. Now our magic target for this game is obviously 1080p, which the resolution is currently set to, 60 frames per second. That is the magic target that we tried to get all graphics cards to until obviously we move to some of the more higher end. Then we're gonna have to kind of change that because it's not gonna be a challenge anymore. But if we check the settings, we're currently in 1080p, windowless, borderless, the uh, V-Sync is turned off. We've got a graphics and we're currently running in a high quality preset. There is nothing fancy, no extra tools that are enabled. AMD FSR is turned off, but it's good to know that we've got FSR 2.1 available if we need it. We may need that in a bit. And then everything else is high. And of course, ray tracing is turned off. I'm not quite sure if we're going to test ray tracing today. I'm not sure whether that card will actually take it, but we'll see how time goes. And if so, we'll give it a go just to see what it does. But anyway, let's drop out of the menu and then we'll continue the game. So we're now into the game and everything is going reasonably well. We're currently averaging around 38 frames per second, not the best, and it's clearly not to our target, but it's reasonably playable, to be honest. It's giving you a more oldish kind of console vibe. There's somebody actually spawned through the floor, which is a little bit weird. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's a game issue or whether it's a graphics card issue, but we'll try to get in somewhere where we can get the uh, FPS to go up and down a little bit. It's a little bit dark on this level at the moment, but I think when we find a car, see if we can take this car. I'm not quite sure. To be honest, I've never actually really played this game. I've kind of just used it for benchmarking, but when we're in a car, usually the FPS drops a little bit and we can see that it has dropped a little bit there. So we're now getting around 28 frames per second as we drive around. 
which is not great, but let's drop out to the menu and see what we can actually do to try and increase that up. Go into the menu, we've got a settings, graphics currently set to custom. For now, we're not gonna change the resolution because obviously that is part of our target. What we'll do is we'll set it to a medium preset. We don't want AM, uh, FSR on, so we'll turn that off for now. Again, we might need that in a bit. We'll turn that off. Everything's to medium or mixture between medium and high according to the preset, and we'll apply those settings. Now, let's get back in the game and see what happens. So we are still currently driving in the car, which is where the FPS is worse. And we have a little bit of an increase. We're currently at 35, 33. It's not great. It's a few FPS. And to be honest, the game doesn't look totally terrible. It, it looks reasonably good, to be honest. Um, if you get out of the car, and we'll, we'll do that. We'll just get out of the car and we'll see what happens. Usually the uh, frames per second jump up seems to be much better. So there we go. It's jumped up now to around 41, 42. So the game doesn't look too bad. It is playable, but again, we're still not at that target. So let's see what other magic we can do to get us to boost up. Dropping back into the settings, we will give it a medium preset. We'll leave it on medium. And then what we'll do is we'll enable a bit of FSR. I'm not really sure. So we've got image sharpening. We'll turn that off for now. Let's go to a balance setting on FSR 2.1. Now FSR 2.1 is actually supposed to be really good. It's uh, much improved over the original uh, FSR one. So hopefully with a balanced preset, we can get it looking pretty good and hopefully our frames per second climb. We'll reset our stats here. Now we're walking around and we have jumped up a little bit. So we're near that 60 frames per second. The image quality isn't too bad. You can tell there's a difference, but it's not crazy bad. But we'll get back to this car and we'll see. So we're currently running at 50, 53 average frames per second, which is actually pretty good for this game and this card. Clearly you can, you can play this game with an RX 6500 XT. Uh, to be honest, you couldn't originally. In our original testing, it was really bad, but the game has been improved. The card has been improved. There's been some good driver updates and we're currently running on the latest drivers for this card. So it's actually going quite well. So now we're in a car. We haven't actually dipped that much. We're coming down now to roughly around 45, 47 frames per second. That's pretty good. It's not dipped as much as I thought it would. We're obviously still getting a, oh, there we go. It's dropped up quite a bit there when there was lots of other cars around. We're kind of hitting 60 now in certain areas. We need to get into a nice built up area. So let's find a built up area with lots of people and lots of cars around and see what happens. Okay, so we're now in a pretty built up area. There's more people walking down the side of the road. There's more cars and things, and we're not dipping too much. Again, this is quite playable. We're running at over 40 frames per second, 50 most of the time. I'm wondering if we do actually drop the uh, FSR quality a little bit, maybe we can get it to come back up again. So if we can just try and hit that 60 FPS target. So we'll put it into performance mode. Let's see if we actually destroy the image quality now and, or let's see if it actually improves. We'll reset our stats again. And so we're now actually hitting uh, that 60 frames per second target. We can't get any more than that, obviously, because of the uh, the AMD issue here. But driving around, we're getting between 50. It's dipping a little bit now with the more traffic in the bigger area. The game quality has dropped significantly, obviously going to performance mode. But in a car, reasonably playable. We're getting between 50 and 60 frames per second. It's not totally horrible. You could still play this. We'll jump out of the car, though, and we'll uh, go first person, see... Uh, what kind of difference that makes and um, now in first person running around we are getting a pretty pretty locked 60 fps so this game is actually quite playable at this we actually got 61 then so that's pretty good and it means that we're jumping over that that weird lock that we've got on this system but we're at 60 frames per second and it's holding reset our stats just to measure that up a bit averagely 60 nothing really going on it's maintaining at 60 cpu is quite underutilized less than 50 percent the gpu kind of has a little bit more left in it but we can't seem to get that to go up a bit but let's change the actual game quality now that we're in performance mode see if we can boost up the graphics just a little bit so we'll go for a high quality setting we'll drop fsr down to two fsr 2.1 down to performance and 
we'll apply those settings. Let's see if we can still maintain the 60 frames per second. So clearly we can't. <laughs> it's jumped right down to like 20. No, it's going back up again. So there's something there with the game obviously loaded. Uh, graphics are not great, even though it's on that kind of uh, quality setting. It does appear that there is a slight difference in the game quality. It's not too bad. You can tell what's going on, but FSR deteriorates the air uh, quality. While it's still in high though, I'm just going to just check and see if we can uh, do a bit of balanced and we'll increase this image sharpness. Let's see if that actually makes a difference. We'll put it to uh, 0.50. That's what the default setting was. So we got a quick preset of high, which says custom because we've turned on FSR at the moment. We've got FSR 2.1 at balanced and we've got image sharpening at 0.5. So let's see if that actually smoothens things up. Clearly the sharpening has done something because the game looks a hell of a lot better now. We'll just reset our stats and we're averaging around 52 frames per second, which is not bad when you're in a car and there's lots of traffic around. There's not many people around at the moment, but we'll find some people. There's some people. So... That's not bad, 50 frames per second there. If we just go back to our settings now and just drop the quality down to medium. So we'll put that on medium and we'll put the FSR onto balance with the image sharpening on and see if we can just get it nice and playable at 60 FPS. So we are now hitting that 60 FPS mark and the game doesn't look too bad. It, it is more than playable. The quality is pretty decent, the sharpening is reasonably nice it's it's no 4k 120 fps but even in a car we're getting 60 frames per second at the moment and i'm kind of gonna guess that if we jump out of the car we're gonna magically there we go so we're hitting that 60 fps solid now reset our stats just to double check yep so our average is currently 60. doesn't matter whether we're running up to these people or not the one percent lows are pretty decent sitting here at 53 and 44 the uh, 0 0.1s just jumped down to but this is not actually a bad gaming experience you could pretty much play this game all the way through and we'll just double check those settings just so that you guys know so if you do have an rx 6500 xt we've kind of found that sweet spot in how to get the game to look really good at 1080p as well as getting it to run at around 60 frames per second so let's drop to the settings for this, we obviously switched our quick preset to high. So we went to a high preset. No, we went to a medium preset. And then we went to the FSR quality to balanced. And then the image sharpening to 0 0.50. Now everything else will be preset as part of that preset, but that's what we did. And we get a pretty decent 60 frames per second gameplay out of it well that's not too bad for this card i actually like that i think it means that this card has got some life left in it and obviously it's thanks to a lot of game updates as well as driver updates too this card never performed like this before so that's pretty good now i thought it was going to take us a bit longer to get here but obviously it didn't we've managed to get to the target that we want with the reasonably good picture quality that is nice so let's have a look at what happens when we enable ray tracing this card should be ray tracing and should have the ability to do ray tracing so Let's go and have a look at how bad it gets. So we'll, we'll keep all the settings as much as we can on what we had before. We will turn on, um, now I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go to medium, we'll go to balance setting and then we'll turn ray tracing on manually. Let's do ray trace reflections, sun shadows, local shadows, and we'll turn lighting onto medium and we'll just see what happens to the FPS when we do this. Okay, so with the most lowest or medium setting of ray tracing, and that's with all the different elements on as well, lighting, shadows, everything, we have taken a significant dip. The graphics card is maxed out now. It's around 98, 99%, and we have dropped from our magic target of 60 frames per second all the way down to an average of 16. Now, this is clearly unplayable, so we're not going to be able to do much with that. Let's drop back to our settings and see what happens if we just turn a few of those things off. So let's go to our ray tracing settings. Um, we'll turn off the lighting. Let's turn that one off. Let's turn off the local shadows and sun shadows. We'll just leave reflections on and we'll see what happens when we do that. It's not looking good though, but then we do know that these cards from AMD, the 6000 series, are not the best at ray tracing. They give you the ability to do it, but they're not great performers. Okay, even with the uh, ray tracing reflections on, it is absolutely tanked our 
frames per second all the way down to around 28. So if you're happy playing at around 30 frames per second, then maybe this is the kind of game for you, but it's not for us. It's, it's not something that we would want to play. So this is another reason why a lot of people do turn ray tracing off because it, it's not great on all cards. You, you clearly need an NVIDIA card really, or an Interlark. Interlarks are very good at ray tracing. It's just that they haven't really released their flagship kind of um, or enthusiast level kind of cards yet. So it, they can do it, they can do it well, but you're gonna have some limitations on what they can do. What you really need is obviously an NVIDIA GeForce card and particularly something from the 40 series. The uh, latest 40 series from NVIDIA are very good at ray tracing. They've actually improved it greatly. And even the ray tracing capability of the latest AMD cards is actually getting really good. Now we do have some new AMD cards coming into the studio soon, so you'll definitely want to subscribe to check that out because obviously we're going to be doing some ray tracing testing on them. We may have to change our targets of 1080p 60fps with those cards, even with ray tracing on. I'm not quite sure yet. We'll see how it pans out. But again, make sure you subscribe if you want to catch that. But apart from that, this card is actually playing Cyberpunk 2077 at a decent quality picture with 60 frames per second at 1080p. And there we have it. You can actually play Cyberpunk 2077 perfectly fine on an RX 6500 XT. This little card is going to start making its own way in the market now. And because of things like driver updates, game updates, things like that, it's going to start having a little bit more power to it. You can't ray trace with it, or you can ray trace with it, but it's not great and you won't want to do it, so don't even try that. But this has actually made us a little bit happier about this. I mean, we only paid £90 for this card originally, so I think it was probably worth more around the £90 to £100 than the uh, original MSRP of £180 and to be honest that even now they're still quite expensive you'll still pay around £160 to £180 for these and they're, they're totally not worth it you can get even older generations if you don't mind buying pre-owned that are much more powerful for less so you wouldn't want to buy these unless you are purposely buying new but it's good to know that they are getting better and you can play even games like this it's, it's amazing don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this and let us know in the comments below are there any other games you want us to test against cards like this or any other cards you want us to test against games like cyberpunk 2077 we do have a pretty decent selection now in inventory particularly around the entry level cards and i know a lot of people are super excited about those and really interested in what they can and can't do purely because of the price of the uh, more higher end and mid-range it's just gone to silly time really we're now going to pack this little one away and put it back into inventory it'll be out again at some point i'm sure we'll want to play something or test something like hogwarts on it which i'm sure will be really really fun but until then we'll catch you in the next one